Boop, 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 boop. So the fossil record provides a huge amount of evidence for evolution by uh, showing us the evolutionary history of life on Earth. We see the extinction of species. We see the origin of new groups, species, families, phyla, uh, and changes within these groups over time. So uh, here, for example, is uh, a, a, a fossil of an organism called Basilosaurus. Uh, this is Alabama's state fossil. Okay, but it unfortunately has this name Basilosaurus, which suggests that it's some type of dinosaur. And originally that's what it was thought to be, but subsequent examination has uh, shown that actually Basilosaurus is not a dinosaur at all. It's actually uh, a mammal, a marine mammal. And how do we know that? Well, one way we know it is where this fossil was found is known to have been a marine site. Uh, and also, we can look at uh, the pelvic girdle back here. You can see how reduced it is relative to the size of this organism. Uh, also, the nostrils of Basilosaurus are found somewhere in the middle of the uh, sloping forehead here. And we know that fossils can document important transitions. For example, the transition from land to sea in cetaceans, whales and dolphins. Whales and dolphins, as you hopefully uh, know before coming into this class, are actually mammals and not fish. Uh, and they evolved from land-dwelling ancestors. Uh, they share ancestry with hippopotamuses, which are aquatic, and also other even-toed ungulates, like deer and cattle and goats. Uh, and you might think that this is an incredible uh, statement, that whales are more closely related to uh, deer than they are to fishes. Uh, but we can make this claim because uh, we have extraordinary evidence to support this extraordinary claim, uh, including uh, fossils from organisms such as Pachycetus. This is one of the earliest uh, ancient ancestors of whales, where we can see uh, the bones of the uh, hind limb, including the pelvis and the femur. Uh, and the, the uh, ulna, uh, sorry, the um, tibia and fibula, and the, the, the toes. Uh, Rhodocetus, which has better adaptive features for a semi-aquatic lifestyle. Uh, the nostrils have moved back from the front of the, uh, the head to a little bit further back to enable them to uh, breathe underwater. Uh, to Dorodon, you can see the pelvic girdle becoming more and more reduced. The hind limbs becoming more and more reduced as uh, we see that these organisms adapted to spending more and more time in the aquatic environment. Basilosaurus fits in somewhere in here, in this range, between Dorudon and our modern living cetaceans that have a very, very reduced uh, pelvic girdle to the point where it is uh, essentially a vestige. But why do they still have it? Because it hasn't totally gone away. Uh, biogeography is another line of evidence for evolution. Uh, biogeography is the geographic distribution of species. Uh, why do we see similar species within a similar uh, habitat or within a similar landmass? Uh, it suggests common ancestry. Uh, so it is hypothesized that the Earth's continents were once in a large single continent called Pangaea and have uh, since separated by continental drift, uh, which is a theory that underpins uh, geology, modern geology. And we understand that as the continents 
uh, spread apart from each other, the species that were on those continents uh, distributed, were distributed to the various continents, where evolution uh, drove those species to evolve uh, into new species that uh, were adapted to those particular habitats. Uh, for example, uh, the oak trees that I mentioned in lecture. Uh, oak trees, we know that there are lots and lots of species of oak trees that are found throughout the southeast, throughout North America, throughout uh, Europe and Asia. But if you go to places like Australia and Africa, not no oak trees. You don't find oak trees growing there uh, naturally uh, because they did not evolve from a common ancestor in those places. They were not Oaks were not present in Pangaea, so they are not present in uh, all of the continents that have evolved since then. Uh, endemic species. Endemism means a species is found only in a particular location and nowhere else in the world. Uh, so, for example, redwood trees are endemic to California and a little bit into Oregon on the western coast of the United States. Uh, sequoia trees are endemic to California. You only find them in the state of California uh, in a particular kind of habitat and nowhere else uh, in natural populations. Uh, islands tend to have lots and lots of endemic species and we find that those endemic species are usually related to uh, species that are found on the nearest land masses. So just like Darwin observed in the Galapagos Islands, uh, the species of the Galapagos Islands showed some affinity to species of uh, South America, being the closest landmass. And uh, if you go up to Madagascar, the species present on Madagascar show affinity with the uh, taxa, the plants and animal that you find in Africa. Uh, Darwin suggested that species on islands are going to give rise to new species as they are new environments, but they have to evolve from the existing heritable differences uh, within the populations of those organisms that migrate to those new environments. Uh, this here is an example of one of our uh, endemic fish in Alabama. A Alabama is actually a site with a lot of endemic species. We have a lot of different habitats. Alabama is uh, amazingly biodiverse, has a lot of species for a land mass its size, and part of the reason is because uh, we are so geologically diverse. So why do we say that uh, evolution is a theory. Well, remember early on I told you that a theory doesn't mean that it's just a, a wild guess. It means it's uh, an idea that supports a lot of evidence, that has a lot of explanatory power. Uh, it accounts for observations and data uh, and attempts to explain and integrate a great variety of phenomena. So Darwin's theory of evolution by means of natural selection, as opposed to by means of acquired characteristics, uh, is integrating many areas of biological study and uh, leads to many new hypotheses. Uh, and research into how evolution occurs is ongoing. So why is it theoretical? Uh, the reason why it is theoretical is uh, we don't understand absolutely everything there is to know about evolution. Yes, we do, uh, we do see that evolution has spawned some laws. Uh, we do see that evolution uh, can be somewhat predictable. We can predict uh, things that we might find in the ancient past. We've seen this even in... Uh, in, within this year with uh, Homo nalisi that's been found in South Africa uh, in the cradle of humanity. Um, but we don't say that we understand it all and that we should shut the book of evolution and 
and resist new ideas. No, we need to continue to look at new evidence as it comes in and modify uh, our understanding of evolution to reflect new evidence. Uh, an example would be if we found life on another planet. Would it be subject to these laws of evolution, uh, the, to the evolution as we see it here on Earth? And the answer is, we don't know. We don't know what life would be like on another planet because we have not, we have yet to observe it. Uh, so, uh, theories very different from uh, laws per se, but very far from uh, being just wild guesses about things. So we should not uh, let ourselves say that evolution is just a theory in some sort of pejorative sense. That is to say that it uh, it dilutes the uh, integrity of the ideas uh, behind evolution.